Hey Bucket Pond family! Today we are building a brand new ecosphere. That is a sealed jar aquarium meant to resemble or replicate an ecosystem. I'll be using one of these beautiful wine jugs here. These were donated to me by a local business owner and I am extremely grateful. They had two of these beautiful wine jugs. They are four liters. They're huge and uh, they're, they're perfect for our projects. Thank you very much uh, to the person who gave me these jars. There's two of them and we're going to build a second jar very soon. But for now, we're going to turn one of these into a beautiful uh, bladder snail ram's horn paradise. That's my goal, a sealed paradise for snails. All right, so let's get started. For our substrate, we are using some gravel and a nice sand and clay mixture. Uh, both of these I dug out of my backyard, out of a spot near the oasis. And for our plants, we are including some alligator weed. This stuff is invasive and uh, it's supposed to grow very quickly. But uh, here in our jar, it will be controlled when we're also including a small water taro plant. Uh, this is a young plant, a, a baby, but they get very large outdoors. I'm hoping it doesn't grow too much in the jar, but if it wants to spread its roots and take over this ecosphere, that's fine. It will act as a nice filter and a nice uh, producer of oxygen. We're also including some hypna moss, which is also known as sheet moss. And I've read online that this stuff will not grow underwater, but we know that it will. So don't trust any online websites to be 100% accurate. Now, I chose this jar because it was a gift, and I'm very happy to have it. But it has a nice wide base, and it'll look great once we get it all fixed up. Now, that narrow opening can be a bit difficult to uh, get our plants and stuff inside, so that's a challenge we have to overcome. We're going to include our water taro plant first and then our substrate on top of that to try to get the roots covered with this sand and clay mixture. Now this sand and clay, uh, this uh, silt type material, it's very heavy, it's very sticky, and uh, I'm very excited to see how it might react to this ecosphere. In past projects, when I've used this sand or this clay, uh, we've created a very rich, uh, very nutrient rich environment for algae to grow, so I'm hoping that'll happen again. And the jar looks pretty good. We had to clean it up a little bit with our spray bottle. Now we're just going to wipe down the outside with a paper towel. Kind of polish the glass a little bit, make it look nice. And now we're going to include our gravel. So uh, I'm digging a big pond in the backyard slowly over time. But <laughs> in my yard, we have uh, a nice gravel layer a few feet down. We have a nice sand layer uh, mixed in with that gravel and clay. And uh, those stones will act as a, a way to increase surface area in the jar and promote bacterial growth, which is very important. There we go. That looks pretty good. Originally, I wanted to do a polydarium, but I could not find a way to build a landmass without having uh, just a big pile of rocks in there. And I didn't want to do that. So we're going to improvise a bit and try to build a different type of polydarium. But now we're going to add our moss. This is going to be like a carpet in the bottom of the jar. And uh, we have to kind of make like a moss taco and stuff it in there and then try our best to get it into place with our long tweezers. This type of jar can be very challenging to plant and to decorate. All right, and uh, there's a little piece of the moss that you can look at a little bit more closely. But everything in here was either taken from my backyard, uh, grown in my backyard, and uh, harvested for free one way or another. Everything except for these couple marble chunks, which I did in fact purchase. Uh, but this amount of marble, you know, three or four little stones, might be maybe 20 cents at the most, you know, in total. And some of them won't fit in the jar, but most of them will. And I'm just including them to help balance the pH a little bit and to uh, add some calcium to this ecosystem. Remember, this is going to be sealed for years. So anything that we include in here is very important at the start. Our alligator weed is going to be a bit like a backup plant. If that taro fails, then our moss and our alligator weed will take over uh, the role of filtration and uh, oxygen produ production. Now the plants do consume some oxygen at night, uh, but they generally produce more during the day than they consume. 
I would advise using artificial lighting and natural lighting for your ecospheres. Um, that's very important as uh, you can have a few cloudy days that might cut back on oxygen production that could cause a lot of your creatures to suffocate. So by supplementing that with artificial light, you can uh, find a nice balance. And it looks like we captured a small slug. He was most likely in that moss, um, which is unfortunate. I did soak the moss overnight, hoping that we could prevent any little creatures from coming in. Uh, but there's actually uh, quite a few hitchhikers of small insects, uh, that little slug, and some other creatures in here that came in with that moss. So we'll have to hope for the best. Those are terrestrial creatures. They live on land. And I don't know how they'll react to life in a sealed ecosystem. I'm going to fill the jar partially with clean water from an aquifer of a pretty neutral pH, and it's never been chlorinated. And now we're going to add some material from our Bowfront Aquarium. This is full of bladder snails and duckweed, a few different types of duckweed. Now uh, this is important, as I'm hoping the duckweed will act as a, like an island for these land-dwelling insects, to give them somewhere to live. And it will also produce oxygen and filter the water a bit, and it will act as a food source. Your snails will not eat live plants, but they will most certainly snack on some uh, wilted duckweed. But now we're going to step outside. This is pool pond number two, and we are looking for a few more bladder snails to include in our project. Something's out here eating some of my plants, uh, caterpillars or crickets or something, uh, but that's fine. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, the plants are growing at about the same rate that they're being eaten, so it works out well. And I want these animals out here to have food, so it's fine. Um, but right here we happen to find a very large bladder snail, a very healthy guy, pretty good size. And by including him in the project, we'll increase our egg production. This is a single strand of Nutella macroalgae. And uh, this is great, great stuff here. I love it. But this will act as a biofilter and additional uh, algae, bacteria, and microfauna will come in as hitchhikers on this little piece of Nutella. It's great stuff. It's a great biofilter. So they should help uh, the life in our jar flourish. The Nutella may or may not take in this jar, but in my experience, a single little piece like that should do well. Nutella grows pretty well from fragments, and that's sort of why I stopped selling the Nutella. Uh, honestly, it can get uh, very invasive. If it's uh, ever released into a lake or a pond, it can spread pretty quickly. But now we're going to add a little bit of water that we took from the pool pond, along with the snails that we captured. We have a couple of ram's horns here, two brown ram's horns. They were actually breeding right now, and that's pretty cool. We have a couple red ram's horns as well, and I'm not as shy about handling the ram's horns as they're a little tougher than a bladder snail, a little bit more durable. And here's a large bladder snail and a ram's horn together. Interesting, but uh, yeah, so we've included a few ram's horns and a few wild bladder snails in here as well. Uh, these wild bladder snails will breed with our tank bred snails, and uh, this is called outbreeding. This will encourage them to lay eggs and to mate more rapidly. But here's the jar 24 hours after setup with that nice sunbeam coming through the middle. This jar is beautiful, you guys. The video is not doing it justice. This is my best looking ecosphere so far. We included a wide variety of plants in here, including macroalgae, moss, and several other items. Uh, you can see a nice size comparison between our uh, wild bladder snail and our ram's horn snail. That bladder snail is larger than most, but I've seen them about twice his size as well out there. Uh, I think it's interesting that they get a little larger in the pool ponds. The tank bred snails are busy down here beneath the moss. Uh, this moss was grown on dry land. And uh, just like our previous project, our snails are down here consuming all the dirt and debris that came in with it which uh, we sort of expected, but it's very cool to see them working to clean the tank already. And this bladder snail has decided that it would like to float to the surface. I love the way they do this. He's not crawling on the glass. It's just floating up to the surface of the water. Um, they can sink or float at will, and it's effectively swimming, and they can swim. Up here at the duckweed layer, 
Um, we have captured quite a few insects, apparently. But there are some little millipedes up here. Little tiny millipedes, you guys. And that's really cool. Um, I hope that they can do well in here. I don't want to throw some stuff into an ecosphere and watch them die. You know, that's horrible. But these little guys, if they can find a food source, if they can reproduce up here, that will be amazing. I hope that they can live. And I hope that they form a little colony at the surface level here. I want to include more surface dwelling insects, more terrestrial creatures, um, and hope that they can live uh, amongst our duckweed. Our water taro looks pretty good. I'm worried that it might try to outgrow this jar, but I'm willing to bet that it'll stay about this size. Uh, maybe grow a new leaf here and there. It might even fail. But if it does, our creatures will consume it and our other plants will move to fill that niche. But there we have it, you guys. This is the $0 ecosphere. It's my best project yet. It's amazing. Thank you so much to the person who donated these jars who asked to uh, remain anonymous. But uh, I love it, you guys. It's so cool. And, um, you know, that was just a gift. I did not expect it. And I thought, let's get home and build up some beautiful ecospheres using these new jars. And again, this is a wine jug. It's four liters. I don't drink alcohol, so I can't really get stuff like this. Uh, but when somebody gives me a jar like this or I find one, I have to use them. It's very important. We're going to seal it up now. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. Um, you can see that we left quite a bit of room for open oxygen there. And we did essentially build a polydarium, though not quite in the way I originally intended. And I'm going to put a little label on the jar. I'm just going to write right on the glass. Uh, but it was sealed on 7-23-23. And I look forward to doing updates on this in the future. Um, you can see all of our other ecospheres from the weekly build series in the background. I build a new jar every week or so. I'm a little behind right now. But we learn with every project, we're clearly getting better. And I'm showing you better ways to do things. So please leave any comments below. Please like and subscribe. Check out the other videos that are about to appear on your screen. And I'll see you again soon.